Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, some reference angles and reference triangles, and we're going to use them to evaluate trig functions for any angle, okay? So for this, you're going to need your notes, something to write with, and that calculator, and we're going to be drawing some pictures, um, making some uh, conversions. So everything that we've done in your notes kind of comes to this point right here. So let's first get this part in your notes. We're going to be referring to what's called a reference triangle and a reference angle. So a reference triangle is the triangle created when you draw a line from the terminal side of an angle perpendicular to the x-axis. Whereas a reference angle is the angle located at the origin in your reference triangle. So get those two things in your notes and then I'll refer to them in a picture here in just a second. So a reference triangle is when we're going to create a triangle after we draw an angle. So let's say I need to draw a 120 degree angle. Remember how we always start with that vertex at the origin, and this is the initial side, the starting side. And if we go 120 degrees, that would be a little bit past 90, right? And we draw in this amount, this would be my 120 degree angle, 120 degrees from my initial side to my terminal side. But in this picture, guys, there's a triangle that we can draw. The reference triangle is the triangle created when you draw a line from the terminal side. So we go on this terminal side, and we just pick a spot. Usually I start where my arrow about was, okay? And I drop it down perpendicular, so make 90 degrees, with the x-axis. So this is the x-axis. I drop my line from my terminal side straight down to the x-axis, making a 90-degree angle right here. This triangle that we've just created this triangle right here, that's called the reference triangle. And this is the triangle that we're going to be looking at when we set up our SOHCAHTOA, our trigonometry, whatever our ratio might be. Okay, there's a reference angle here as well. This guy right here, theta, that's my reference angle. It's located at the origin in my reference triangle, so it's located at that zero, zero spot. Now, in this case, I actually can figure out the number of degrees for my reference angle. Remember how this is 120 from there to there? Well, how many degrees would be left if I went and continued until I hit that x-axis? Well, remember that's 180 degrees right there, that straight line, and I've used 120, so that means 60 degrees would be my reference angle inside of my reference triangle. To make that 180 degrees rotation here that we would have if we went from one side of the x-axis to the other. So that 60 degrees is called my reference angle. So let's uh, take a couple examples here. We're going to sketch the angle, the reference triangle, and then find the reference angle. So let's do 210. Now 210, remember if we were going to draw a picture, this would be my initial side. If we went up like this, this would be 90. This would be 180, and a little bit more. This would be 210. Okay, so 210 gets me from there to there. That's my 210 degrees. However, if I was going to draw in my reference triangle, that means I pick a spot on my terminal side. So my terminal side is right here, guys. I pick a spot. Usually, again, I pick mine at the towards the arrow, almost hitting the arrow and I have to draw the line perpendicular to the x-axis. So this dot needs to connect to the x-axis straight line making 90 degrees. You always connect it to the x, you never connect it to the other way to the y. So this has made my reference triangle. You can see the triangle here, here it is. Now finding the reference angle means we have to figure out what's going on right in there. How many degrees is that in that corner right in there at the origin? Well, for that, I'm going to have to think about my 210 degree angle. Remember, my 210 was 180 plus a little more. I need to figure out how many degrees it is from there to there. Well, remember, 210, if I go from here to here, that's 180, right? But I went a little bit farther past. How many more degrees did I go past 180? Um, looks like I went 30 more degrees, 210 minus 180, right? So 30 degrees would be the reference angle in my reference triangle. Okay, let's do 110 over here, number two. 110, so again, starting at the origin, initial side, 
Do, 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 do. This would be 90, a little bit more. This is 110. I know it looks remarkably similar to 120. It's just a sketch, okay? And now to draw my reference triangle, again, I'm going to put a dot near the arrow on the terminal side, drop it down to the x-axis in this case. The other one I had to draw up because it was underneath the x-axis, making this reference triangle. And now we have to figure out what's going on right there in that angle in my triangle. Well, that angle would be 70. Do you see why? Because I've gone 110 right here, and I need to know how many more degrees it takes to complete that 180 degrees. That would be my reference angle. So again, 180 minus 110 leaves me with 70 degrees for that reference triangle. OK, let's keep drawing some more. Here's a couple more negatives this time. Remember, negatives just mean that we're going to go a different direction. So 0, 0, initial side. Negative 130 means I'm going to go this direction underneath. OK, 90. That would be negative 90. A little bit more. Not negative 180. Don't want to go all the way over there, so I'm just going to sketch my line. This would be negative 130 degrees. So again, to draw the reference, triangle, we're going to go ahead and place a dot on the terminal side, draw that line down, or in this case up, right, to the x-axis, complete the triangle. So now to find the reference angle, I need to know how many degrees are in there. And again, thinking about 180 degrees, because I see a straight line there on the horizontal, this is 130. How many more would it take to complete the 180? 50 degrees more. So that is a 50 degree angle that we would call the reference angle in the reference triangle. Okay, let's keep going and do one more like this with a negative, negative 295. So again, initial side is always on the positive x-axis. So we're going to go negative 295. Here we go. So we're going to go underneath. This is negative 90, negative 180, negative 270 and a little bit more. So we went the negative direction now, guys. This is negative 295 degrees, okay, from our start to our finish. And we can still have a reference triangle here, placing a dot on the terminal side, so where we ended up. And we're going to draw it perpendicular, so straight down in this case to the x-axis, making a right triangle. We want to know how many degrees are right there because that would be the reference angle in our reference triangle. So for this, I'm sort of seeing a circle being traced. Do you see that dashed circle? And there are 100, or no, there are 360 degrees in a circle. So I'm going to subtract 295 to see how much is left. 65 degrees more would have completed that circle had I kept it going. So there's that idea of finding the reference angle and the reference triangle. Now, what if those angles become a little strange? What if they turn into radian measurements? These are radians because they have pi. So one way to do this would be to convert these into degrees. Then we can sketch the triangle just like we did before. So what I think I'm going to do in this one is maybe I'll just do number five and not number six here. What we need to do first is convert this into degrees. So remember our conversion works like this. The number of degrees, which we'll call x because we don't know, over 360, because that's how you measure degrees in a full circle, equals the number of radians, 5 pi over 3, over 2 pi radians, because that's the total radians in a circle. So the bottom of those fractions both represent the totals, ones in degrees, ones in radians, and the top represents the portion of the angle that we're talking about. So if I cross multiply this way, I get 2 times pi times x, that's 2 pi x. If I cross multiply this way, I get 360 times 5 pi. So 360 times 5 pi becomes 1,800 pi and then that would be over 3. And if you want to simplify 1,800 over 3, like this, that would be 600 pi. A little bit easier to work with those smaller numbers. And I still have 200 pi x over there. Now to get the x alone, I need to divide by 2 and pi. Divide by 2 and pi. Careful, I like it when you divide by pi's and you have a radian measurement in pi because they just cancel. 
So we have 600 divided by 2, that would be 300. So what we're talking about, this is a fancy way of talking about a 300 degree angle, which is one we're familiar with, whereas the 5 pi over 3 was a radian measurement. No big deal, we can convert them and then continue to do the same thing we were doing before. So if I was going to draw a 300 degree angle, origin, initial side, 90, 180, 270, a little bit more, there to there is 300, 300 degrees, initial side to ending spot, and now to draw the, the uh, reference triangle, again on my terminal side, placing a dot, drawing it to the x-axis, be careful not to go this way, oops, don't draw it to the y, okay, draw it to the x-axis, draw that triangle, and then we need to figure out how many degrees would go right there, that would be 60 degrees again to complete that full circle that we start seeing in that picture, okay? So there's this idea that we can convert even when we aren't familiar with the, the angle measurement, convert it into degrees, it's a little easier to sketch. So key thing to remember, we have the reference angle, the reference triangle, the triangle's the key to it all, and we always draw that triangle to the x-axis, never to the y. So here's where we're going with this. Here's why we would want to draw that reference triangle. Because what we're about to do is put some uh, values into our sketch, okay? And we're going to evaluate those sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent functions. So we're going to set up the fractions from a triangle that we're given. So for this picture, guys, or for this, oops, sorry, for this problem, we're going to need to draw a picture. The picture is the key to it all. Drawing that triangle is the key to it all. So here's my x and y axes again, and you'll want to draw this in your notes. And we're going to have a point. The point is not in degrees now, guys. We're not going to draw an angle in degrees. We're going to have a point. The point is negative 4, 3. So let's think about where negative 4, 3 would be. So if I go over negative 4, up 3, negative 4, 3 places me right here. This is negative 4, 3. Rather than giving us a degrees, they just tell us where the terminal side is located. So that means my angle must have started here and gone all the way through this point right there. Okay, that is a point on the terminal side. Now, can we draw the reference triangle? I hope so, because that's what we've been working on. We draw that triangle straight down. Okay, we draw that triangle straight down to the x-axis. Can we find the degrees or the theta right there? Not really, because we don't know the number of degrees that we rotated to get here. Okay, could have been 120, it could be 110. But what we can do when we're going to set up these sine, cosine, tangent, and cosecant, secant, and cotangent ratios here, what we can do, even though we don't have the degrees, is use this point to help us put some labels on the sides of the triangle. Okay, so remember, ladies and gentlemen, using that point that gives us some distances or some numbers we can place on the sides of this triangle. Remember here we went over on the x-axis negative 4, right? We went over to negative 4, so that is a negative 4 for that side of the triangle. And I know you're thinking a negative 4 side of a triangle, but remember that's telling me the location of the triangle as well. So I need to keep that as a negative. The up and down side of the triangle, or the height right here, how far did we go up? 3. And then we're also going to need to know this hypotenuse side because we're going to need that when we calculate things like sine that has opposite and hypotenuse in it and all that. Okay, so this is the angle we don't know. I'm just going to label it with that theta because I can't actually figure out degrees because I don't know the degrees of the angle. But I can still set up those ratios once I find out that hypotenuse side. How would we find it? Pythagorean theorem. We'd go 3 squared plus negative 4 squared equals x squared. That's 9 plus, careful, 16, negative times a negative makes a positive, and we get 25 equals x squared, so x would be 5. So this missing side right here is 5. And now that I know that, in my reference triangle, I can set up any of these ratios for theta, because we're pretending we're standing at this angle in our triangle, and we're going to set up that ratio. So sine is opposite, so I'll look opposite. That is 3 over hypotenuse, that's labeled with 5, 3 fifths, done, okay? Cosine of theta, if you were standing at theta, cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 4 over 5. Yes, keep it as a negative, it tells me the location of the triangle. 
And then tangent of theta would be opposite over adjacent, so that would be 3 over negative 4. Now, cosecant, remember, he was related to the sine. He was just the reciprocal, so we'll put 5 over 3. And secant would be 5 over negative 4, hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent is adjacent over opposite, so negative 4 over 3. So once we have our triangle drawn with those points on there, setting up those fractions is pretty easy. We just need that visual. A very well-drawn visual is the key to it all. Okay, we'll do one more like that, and then I think you're good. If you feel like you're good to this point, then you don't need to keep watching, but I think I'll do one more just so that you have that for uh, future reference. So we have a point 3, negative 3. Here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And I'm going to plot where 3, negative 3 would be. 1, 2, 3 to the right. 1, 2, 3 down. This is the point 3, negative 3. And that is the ending side of an angle. So that means I started here, and I either went negative down here, or I went all the way around past 270 and ended there. Either way, I ended at this terminal side. Okay, Got a little crazy with the arrow there. Didn't have to go that far. Um, this point now, we're going to use that point to draw my reference triangle. So I'm going to sketch them straight up to the beautiful uh, x-axis as we should. And remember, this is the theta, and we don't know the degrees at this point. Now let's put the information we do know on the triangle. This distance on the x-axis, we went over 3. On the y-axis, we went down 3. So I'm going to label them with 3 and negative 3, and then we're going to find that hypotenuse again using Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus negative 3 squared equals x squared. 9 plus positive 9 again, x squared. We have 18 equals x squared. So if I square root the 18, and again, simplify that square root, we'd end up with 3 square roots of 2 for the x. So the hypotenuse is 3 square roots of 2. Now we can set up our beautiful sine ratio. So the sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse. So if I go opposite, it's negative 3 over 3 square roots of 2. Now, guys, we can't leave a square root in the bottom, so we're going to have to go ahead and rationalize that denominator, put one on top and bottom again. So we'd have negative 3 square roots of 2 over 3. This right here becomes a square root of 4, and that's 2. So 3 times 2 makes 6. I'm going to erase. Whoops. And now I can simplify this. That's negative 1 half. So this becomes negative 1 square root of 2 over 2. Okay, there's my sine. Now cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So we end up with 3 over 3 square roots of 2. And again, you can't leave a square root in the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the square root of 2, square root of 2. Okay, and we end up with 3 square roots of 2 over, again, 3 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 becomes square root of 4. So 3 times 2 makes 6. This becomes 1 half. So 1 half, or 1 square root of 2 over 2. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Negative 3 over 3, which you can simplify to make negative 1. So notice how we're setting it up, and then we're always checking to simplify. That's the key. Make sure that you remember to simplify. Okay? Cosecant related to the sine, just the reciprocal. So if I go back and I look at the sine, how I started that setup, I would just do the reciprocal. So hypotenuse over opposite. So 3 square roots of 2 over negative 3. You may want to simplify that 3 over negative 3 to become a negative 1. So it would be negative 1 square root of 2. Okay. And then secant. Okay, secant is related to the cosine. So we'll go ahead and figure out that cosine there. We'll just flip him over. So it would be 3 square roots of 2 over 3. Now remember, you can simplify that, and you end up with a square root of 2. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So we'd end up with 3 over negative 3 this time, which is the same thing as negative 1. So all of those, I use my first three to kind of guide me to what those three look like. 
So that's how we can go ahead and use this idea of reference triangles, simplifying our answers as we go to make sure that we get that final value in its most simplified form. So I want to thank you for taking good notes and watching. See ya.